Uh, so good evening and thank you very much for joining us on uh, Yak uh, Media Production. Uh, finally, uh, we are live. Yesterday was an interesting session with, uh, we had a very interesting session with uh, Majid Waris. Uh, we will be speaking to uh, Al Fayya of Saudi Arabia, Oenga Samuel Ousu. He also plays for the Black Stars and very soon will be connecting with Samuel Ousu. Um, you can join the Yak Media Production uh, pages on um, Facebook, it's Yak Media Productions, on Twitter, it's Yak Media. Uh, just as it is here, we are waiting to have Samuel Ousu connected. Um, so we can have a discussion um, finally on the page Samuel Usu on on and uh, yesterday trying to get him connected and uh, begin the discussion so thank you very much all of you for joining uh, you can be sharing the page with others as many people as possible to join the interaction when we finally have um, Samuel Usu join the chats okay so Samuel is here uh, let's okay um, okay well um, um welcome welcome sir thank you thank you thank you thank you big boss thank you. How, how is everything there Everything is fine by his grace. How about you? Well, we're fine. Thank God. You know the network uh, in Ghana yeah, is taking is taking minutes to connect. I know, I know. I Sorry for keeping you waiting. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Uh, well, uh, Nathaniel is waiting to do it. But uh, there, there is this uh, pandemic across the world. Everybody is suffering it. Um, how how are you taking it back there in Saudi Arabia? Is the country locked down, or you still have um, your freedom there? Oh, uh, how should I then put it? Uh, like you know, when the thing when when the thing started, you know the Corona pandemic, you know, we all thought it was a joke, but you know, as time goes on, you know, like it was it was killing a lot of people in in Italy. So I think. Uh, the the head administration in Saudi Arabia, I think like they spoke to all the clubs and I think each and every one in uh, Saudi Arabia. So before they wanted to give us a total lockdown, but they thought of, you know, like other people, maybe because when this total lockdown comes in, like people might not survive, you know, so they, they just give us like, you know, they place a curfew on us, like from before it was from morning from seven o'clock to 7 p.m., like you are able to go wherever you want to go, but from seven till the next day, seven p.m., you are not allowed. So by now, I think like you know the cases was increasing, people were dying. So I think like they bring they bring the date like the time to three o'clock p.m. to the next the next day six six o'clock. So that's how it is here in Saudi Arabia. And some Good. some some places some places in Saudi some towns in Saudi are totally locked down. But where I am. They, they have just please care from us. You can go out from excellent six o'clock to three, 3 p.m. Yeah. Uh, so basically, the lifestyle in Saudi Arabia is not the same. How has the COVID nineteen changed the perception of life in Saudi Arabia? Okay, uh, for me, since, since like for me, since I came here, you know, like. I think I think this Corona ha hasn't really changed, you know, anything about the like the Arabians, you know, because you know you know like we know Saudi Arabia to be a desert country, you know, so the sun the sun here the sun here is very hot, so I think in a normal in a normal day like in the morning you never see, you will see nobody in town. They only work from five o'clock five p.m. to maybe one o'clock in in the morning. So I think. This corona has not really changed everything because they are always in the house. They only come out in the evening, so I think it's just normal. Yeah. Well, um, has there been any announcement uh, of when football 
uh, competitive football will resume in the country? Not, not really, not really. Like you know, when the thing started, we were just waiting. Maybe like you know, this corona pandemic will just this corona pandemic will just leave within a month or or two, so we can start. But we realize the cases are rising, a lot of people are dying. So they just give us. They even told us to come home. You know to come home to further notice but you know like you know our our borders have been closed so i was not able to come but a lot of my players my teammates like they went to their country back and i'm just here you know. nice nice uh so basically you the players uh, how are you coping do you have um, an opportunity to train in groups are you using some uh, software or, or are you trading your house yeah, like, like, I train sometimes. I go to the gym, you know, like when when the corona started, like when uh, they gave us a break, like we the place to go home, like they open they open the club gym and they, they told us like we need to uh, we need to train with like social distancing. So before I was training with our fiscal coach and some two other players, but like you know, they they all went to so I'm just doing it alone. Sometimes with my big brother, and sometimes I go to the gym. Sometimes I train in the house. Okay, uh, but do you get in contact with your coaches? What are some of the messages the team officials are sending to you, the players? Some daily messages to you? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, like they've been, you know. Like before, like I think the uh, last two days, you know, they, they sent us a program like, you know, uh, we, did, we did players to train like the programs, like training programs. And I think we have a group, we have a group chat, like we have a group chat on uh, uh, WhatsApp. So they've been posting, we need to just take care of ourselves. We need to stay safe from this pandemic. So I think they have been encouraging us. So everything is good. We're just hoping for the best. Wow. Uh, enough uh, of uh, Corona. Let's come back to football. I, I think very little is known of your time in, in Ghana. Uh, we, we know you play for Vision FC, but nobody really um, has that uh, had that opportunity of watching watching your football in Ghana. What the, was the experience like playing in the Ghana League? Oh, okay, uh, like it was a great experience because we all started like as a Ghanaian player, unless we are not born in Ghana, you know, we the Ghanaian players who were born in Ghana, you know, we love this, <laughs> we love this Ghana football, like, you know, so it was a great experience because from, I think, Vision FC, I went to Red Bull Academy, the one in Sudakope, you know, I trained with some yeah. white coaches, some big, with some big players, this uh, House of Four captain, Fatao, Fatao, Fatah was my senior. Mohammed. Yeah, yeah Fatah was my senior. Uh, Alawa, Media Mago Kipai was my senior. Uh, a lot of players. Ziggy was my teammate. Rafael Jamina. You know, so we are having a lot of qualities. So I think, like, uh, Ghanaian, uh, like Ghana football really improved me. It really improved me. And, you know, the strength and the endurance was very good. Yeah. Great. So. When the challenge came for you to travel outside, uh, did you go for some trials in Europe before you came back or you went once? Oh, okay. Uh, it was like when I was in Red Bull Academy, like we went to, we went to a tournament at France. Uh, we went, I think it was 16 teams and like we were second. So I think in the, uh, during the tournament, uh, I was being scouted by this Serbian club. So when I came back, you know, we have some issues with the academy and, you know, like they told us to come home to further notice. So like, you know, as a footballer, you cannot just stay home without doing nothing. So me, I was, just, I was there. I never knew, you know, something like this will happen. Even though they spoke to me when I, when I was in France, like they want me, but I came like some months later, I wasn't hearing from them. So I was just there on a faithful day. My manager just called me and said, like, you know, these seven people, they have come, they want you, and would you like to go? And I said, why not? It's an opportunity. So I just took my bag and, you know, I went to Serbia. That's it. Great. I'll come back to when you first uh, landed in Serbia. Uh, but a lot of the footballers I've interacted with uh, who moved from Ghana have had some 
fond memories, some challenges and difficulties playing in Ghana. Uh, what are some of the difficulties you went through here playing in Ghana? Okay, for me, for me, like I think you know, like you know, for me, one of the one of the difficulties was like you know, like starving, starving yourself. Sometimes you play, you play without food, you know, like. Me sometimes I take it to be a, like a normal thing because we Ghanaians, both footballers and non-footballers, we know how Ghana is. Like when you want to play football, you need to starve, you need to like sacrifice a lot before you get there. So I, that was some of the challenges I went through. I you know sometimes you'll be playing for 90 minutes without having anything in the stomach. You know, so no, that was some of the challenges. You know, and you know bad bad pitches, especially with the. Division one, division one, division two. When I was there, I was playing division two. So imagine the pitches there. Sometimes you go to some some opponents, you know, they are played very bad. But it was a great experience, you know. You cannot just, I can't complain. It was good. Yeah. Good. Uh, so when you you landed in Serbia, I think it was in August um, 2014, right? Yeah, I went. I went to. I went to. I went to Serbia, that was 20, 20, 2014, 2014, January. That was when I went, when I went to Radnik Sodoris, my first club. They were in first division. Okay. That was so how, how was the experience? Because January 2014, and that's supposed to be their, their winter. Their winter. So you just imagine, you know, it was crazy. Very, very cold, and it was snowing, training in the snow for the first time. You no, know, so... It was. It wasn't just. It wasn't just easy, you know. And you know, these white people. I got like it. It, it wasn't good. Snow. Very cold. Sometimes raining, and you know, especially they don't understand the language. So it was. It was very difficult, you know. So the first uh, few months in Serbia was terrible, especially with the snow. The yeah, like, with the snow, it was terrible. But you no, know, I was. I was like, I was happy because, you know, when I was going, I went there with uh, one of my Red Bull players. That was uh, Sasses Kujo. And this, uh, like, in the olden days, this across of folk, Gbagbati, uh, Osebunsu. Yeah. Osebunsu was in the team, so, like, you know, it was like we're having three black players, you know, in the club. But in, like, in, in a normal mood, the weather condition, the language, the food and everything, it was not, it was not just easy, you know, it was. But you, you missed home. You, you missed home. Were you calling back home? Yeah, I was calling back, I was calling back home. I was calling back home, I was calling back home you know. I was calling back home. And it, it came to a time, it came to a time I, near, I nearly gave up, you know. I nearly gave up on football because, you know. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, you know the, the the form you know the form and or like the, the the like the encouragement i got from my parents when i was coming you know you know i came with you know like a better form because i've already traveled to france came back playing division one division two league scoring you know doing a lot of so the the motivation was there you no know. but when i came you no know, the coaches the coaches i got were not much interested in young players and at that time, I was I was seventeen. That was January seventeen. March, March I will be eighteen. So I wasn't able to sign a professional contract, and the league has already been started. So I was just training with the junior side and the second team. So it was it was very horrible, but that's part of the life. So thank God. So what what actually made you regret, and that that nearly pushed you to to give up? What what was it? What was the oh, time? What was that moment? Uh, like, you know, being, being, being there, you know, like as a young player, you know, and we all know when you are going to Europe, like we all think like, ah, I've been in Europe, you want to play, you want to show up your talent. It's like, you know, the coach, the coach was there, is not much interested in young players. So I was just thinking, ah, I should have been in Ghana, you know, this kind of thought. If I was in Ghana, like I would be playing scoring you know but i'm just here sitting at the bench not getting playing time you know a whole lot of excuses so when, sometimes when i think about home the time was playing the time like the time I was having my form and as of now i'm not playing the form is like the form is no more there so i i decided to come back you know come back again but you know i got a lot of encouragement from my my parents my friends my management like hey sammy come on it's a, it's a stepping stone you know just concentrate, everything will be fine. Yeah. 
Great. Uh, and finally, you signed and helped um, Ravnik to uh, gain promotion into the top flight. Uh, yeah. wh what was that season? How was the season for you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, uh, during that season, like, you know, it was great because uh, I think, you know, when we get to the second, the second half of the season, like the coach, the coach, the coach really showed interest in me. You know, he was putting me in some of the games, coming in like from the bench, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, and I was, I was doing my best because that was my first time playing the division league in you know in Europe. You know, so I was doing my best, and in the winter season too. So everything was good. So we won, we won the league. You know, and then that was the best motivation as a young player to. To, to win to win a league with you know your first season in a club to win a league and so that motivates me a lot to train harder for the next premier league and that's how it happened well but then you, you went to um turkey you went to stand yeah. for against i believe i think you impressed but you you were not able to stay with the club for a long time what happened ah uh, okay you know like uh let me just put it in this way, you know, like I saw it against uh, Big. That was, you know, in summer 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, I went, I went, uh, I went there. We, we went to uh, for a preseason. I, I did best. You no, know, I scored some goals during the preseason, and the yeah. coach also was much interested in me because the coach was a former player, I think, from the or of Besiktas, you know, and he like he liked young players. You know, he always motivates me, calls me into his room, but. I was injured, you know, I was injured for eight months and, you know, everything just started coming down. So I need to, you know, they were, they were like, how do I say, they were angry, you know, a young player, you are injured for eight months, you know, they don't understand. A whole lot of pressure and so I decided to just cancel my contract and restart again, you know. So oh, I so you, you actually terminated that contract? Yeah, I, I terminated my contract because they were giving me some, uh, like, no, they wanted to send me loan. They wanted to take send me to a loan in Norway, but I told them I don't want. I don't. I don't want to go to Norway. I want to stay. And they told me no. They don't want me to stay. So I just told them like no. Me, I don't want Norway. So if they don't want me to stay, then I just want to cancel my contract. So I just terminated and came back to Serbia. Again. So basically, your time in Turkey was not that exciting for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I play. I play. I think I played three games and I scored one goal. That was it. That was it. Yeah. But you signed for three years. I signed for three years. Yeah. Then you came back to um, Serbia. As Serbia, I came back to Chukarički. Yes. What happened? How did they get to know that you wanted to terminate your contract? How was that move like? Oh, you know, when I, when, I was, when I was in Serbia, I met Chukarički twice. I scored them. So when I was in Serbia, I know Chukarički is one of the uh, like biggest clubs there. I think maybe the third best, you know, biggest yeah. club in Serbia. So uh, when I was in my first club, so Dorisa, you know, that was, that was when we came to the Premier. As a young player, first season, I scored seven goals with three assists. You know, a lot, the biggest club, they were chasing me, but I just wanted to leave the country you no, know, just to go another country and try the football, you know. So when, yeah. even when even when I signed, when I signed for Grand League, as for Chukarechki, they were still pressuring my manager. They want me, they want me, you know. So like they've been chasing me for years. So when they had because you know news travels and as a professional player, you know when you terminate your contract, you do this, people will know and this kind of stuff. So they just they just they like they just came to the news and uh, they just contacted my manager. So I was there, and my manager called me. To Karachi, they have come. Do you want to go? And I was, yes. Now I've terminated my contract. You know, I was injured. I just need to restart. So why not? And I came to Chuka. So it was, it, it wasn't, it was, it was easy. Like, you know, they already show interest and I, I came. That was it. Well, before we even come to your current club, uh, can we say from the statistic that uh, Chukariki has been your best side in your career? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For now, for now, yeah. I was, I was, I was with Chuka for two seasons. So I would say Chuka, like being uh, when I was in Chuka, was the best statistics so far. You know. Yeah. I, I was watching uh, some of your highlights with uh, Chukariki yesterday, and I realized that even on your social media handles, the fans of that club follow you a lot, and they yeah, really yeah, like yeah. you. They do. What was the connection? 
Yeah, yeah, the, you know, the, you know, the connection, the connection, the connection was, there was good because, uh, you know, I was I was able to speak the language too, so it it wasn't difficult for me. And you know, like, you know, in Chuka, I felt like I was home. They really love me. The fans when I go out, sometimes I do I eat free. I go to some restaurant and they say, hey, somewhere Chuka, I just buy. They don't take anything. I just go. They really love me. So even when 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 i was when i was coming to Afi, i you know like you know it wasn't that easy you know oh somewhere please stay no somewhere little messy little magician you are living this you know they really love me it was great you know sometimes people just come to stadium to watch our game not because of chica sometimes because of me and sometimes when i don't play some games you i'll just go there to watch myself but you see like, the stadium is empty you know so i think it was it was it was good you know and they the love was deep. They encouraged me a lot. They pushes me, and it was good. Yeah. So it's it's not only in Ghana that um, in Africa that players get tend to get free. You get things for free when you play well. Yeah, yeah there's no only in Africa. Yeah. So you you are eating free in in Serbia I was eating free. Yeah, I was eating free. Yeah. Wow. Thank God you don't like food, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But, but anyway, uh, you gain call up into the Black Stars. I'm not sure you've played for any of the junior national team before. No, no, no. And that was a miracle to that was, that was come miracle. straight. <laughs> when, you, when you got the call up, the announcement or news that you've been invited to the Black Stars, uh, were you surprised? Oh, okay. Uh, no, I... I in, for frankly speaking, like, I was a little bit surprised, you know, because no, I was surprised because, like, just let's compare, like, you know, the league I was playing, you know, Serbian league, let's say, is not one of the top leagues in Europe, you know, and we, as, like, we as Ghanaians, I know, we follow much the Bundesliga, the the English Premier League, you know. So when when we took out that season, the second season, I was having a good season. But me, I was thinking, okay, fine. Maybe when maybe I got opportunity into from Chuka into a bigger club, that was where maybe the call up will come because you know we can yes we look like you know we watch this Premier League and the biggest club. So when it came, it came as a surprise. But when 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 I was looking when I was looking to myself, the form and the the statistics, you know that season, I told myself, okay, fine, maybe. I think maybe I really deserve it. That's why they called me. So I was, I was very happy. Yeah. So how did the news come to you? Did you read uh, on the internet or you, you no. got a call? I I got a call, but the call, even the call, it didn't came like maybe you've been invited into the national team. I was I was I was there in, uh, like one faithful day, you know. And me, one thing about me, I just don't really take normal calls from you know a number. I don't know, and a number is not on my phone. So I was just there one faithful day with, you know, one of my friends. So I was even charging my phone in the room, and I was sitting, I was at the sitting room. So I had my phone, you know, like, ringing. I came, it was like a Ghana number. And I was, ah, who is calling me? Me, I don't take Ghana numbers, like, you know, you know, this four steps and this a whole lot. So yeah, I decided not to take. So... It was still ringing. I wanted to go back to the sitting room. And when I was coming back, like, I felt something within me. No, just take this and listen to what the person would say. So, God being faithful, I answered the call and it was uh, our, our, let's say, our former, our ex our ex coach, uh, uh, coach, uh, Kosiapia, you know. And it so, was, you, you nearly rejected the coach's call? I nearly, I nearly rejected the call, you know. So, <laughs> He called and was like, hello? And I said, yes, please. And he said, is this somewhere we should? And I said, yes. And I said, okay, this is a Kosiapia Ghana Blaster coach. Like, you know, we are, we, are, we are monitoring you. You know, we are monitoring you. And we see you are doing, you are doing best in this season. So just keep, just, keep it, just keep doing your best. That is all. You, you hear from us. And he just hung up. I do not even speak. I just said, thank you. And, you know, he hung up. So I was just there and... You know, people were tagging me, tagging me on social media. They like, 
both was uh, hey Sami, the news has come you know fana like provisional squad 30 players were inside you know and after a, a whole lot of list was coming here some list will come my name is inside other will come my name is not inside you know so like i was okay fine if i'm really part of the squad they will send you know like a letter to the club and that is where i'm going to know i'm being part. So i was not just i was not just listening to what people were tagging me so one day i was there they called me into the you know the, the club office and was like Congratulations, Sammy, you've been invited to the national team. So that is where, like, I realized, no, everything has just come to pass. You know, I just do something like this. <laughs> so, so one question, Apia's call ended. When he spoke to you and ended the call, and you, you, you ended the line, what did you feel inside your room alone? Yeah, yeah, I, I, like, you know, I felt I was happy. Frankly speaking, I was happy because, you know, you know, for a whole national team coach, we know how, you know, like what Akosiapi has really done for the, you know, the national team. For a national team coach, you know, with a higher standard and this kind of, to call me and just to tell me we are monitoring you, you are doing your best. You know, I felt, and even, even if like the call up, even I was in part of the call up, I would knew maybe they have something good for me. So I was, I was really happy. I was really happy to, to, to get a call from you. Great. So, when you came to the Black Stars camp uh, to meet the likes of Andre Ayu, um, top, top players are Samuel Jan, and all of them, the first day getting in contact with them, you never played in under 17, under 20, straight away to the Black Stars. What was the feeling? Yeah, yeah, it it was great. It was great, and you know, like I'll just, I'll just, you know, I'll just use use this opportunity to just to thank you know the senior players, as I'm watching, the there you, you know, Thomas Pate, all this like this 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 big place. You know, the way the the way they welcome with the young players, you know, it was great. You know, because we we like it, whether we are young or we are not young, we are there for one purpose, just to win the cup for Ghana. So they do encourage us, you know. To do our best because we are in this, we are in this together just to train very hard give our maximum just to bring the cup together so the feelings was good the feeling was good and they were very close to me very close to each and everyone we sometimes the way we speak the way we joke i seem like we are we, we are their their age mates you know we do everything together but the respect was there like senior and those guys it was there so the feeling that it was great very good so who was your roommate? Oh, okay. Uh, my roommate was, uh, I think, Felisana when we were in Dubai for the camping. Yeah, Felisana yeah. was my roommate. But when we came to Egypt, I think I was with uh, Atama, Atama Larry. Okay. Uh, in Egypt, um, a lot of people did not actually give you that, um, uh, let's say, that chance of making the outcome. But you played your first game for the Black Stars against Namibia. When you were coming into the pitch, uh, what were you feeling? Were you saying, oh, thank God the dream has come through? Or you just took it as a normal day? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, through, through the campaign from, uh, from Dubai, you know, uh, the friendly games and everything, like, you know, I start, I get my, you know, my motivation and everything, and, like, from from the players as well, and also the likes of Samoro uh, Sekufo, Selastete, Afen Dankan, all these coaches, they were there, they were like, ah, you are, you, are, you, are, you are, we know you are young, but you are doing best, you can do it. So, when, like, when we were coming to Egypt, the motivation it was there the form was there and i was i was really focused so when i go when i got a chance to play i was like i i first i said oh the dream has really come true but you know like there there wasn't a pressure on me like ah uh, this is half corn you know i took it as a normal game like you know it's been a half corn it's just it's just a tournament we are playing but when you're on the field you are it's like it's just one ball we are all playing the same no one is big and no one is no small so just... well you you took it normal but uh, you are a human being a lot of players have said there are games that they feel jittery they are shaking uh, which of the games of the black stars uh, 
did you really i mean feel some jitters in your stomach getting onto the pitch you were shaking when you were playing okay i think i i think our game our game against uh i think cameroon that was that was the first game i started i was in the first level so yeah. from let's say from our last meeting to the dressing room to the field you know i was little bit shaking because that was the first time you know like to be in the first level with the likes of you know jordan are you the day are you did uh Wakasu. so you no know, it was it was it wasn't good i wasn't feeling okay you know from the camp you know i was shaving i was i was a little bit afraid because you know like to be with them sometimes they motivate you but sometimes you know the shouting from the senior players you know sometimes you know we play with our heart and as a young player of course we're gonna get some you know shouting little bit of insult you know so it was against cameroon that was my first game the one i started you know first five ten minutes it wasn't it wasn't just good for me like within me you know a whole lot of pressure but as i realized and i realized we are all playing one football you know everything was good yeah good one significant moment in your career, I was in the stadium in Egypt, the game against Benin. When the coach brought you on, John Boy got the red card. You yeah, have to yeah, take yeah. you off again. What, what did you feel? Because it was tough. Okay, for me, for me, like, you oh, know, when, for me, when, when John, John, Boy, John Boy got the red card, you know, I, I, I really knew maybe they would, de they would make it like, a substitute but no i wasn't thinking it's gonna be me because i just entered the game that was let's say sec first half and second half just i've played like 10 minutes you know so i wasn't i i wasn't i wasn't thinking it's gonna be me but when i was just there it's even i think uh and uh, the who told me hey some you've been substituted i said what so i just think it was me some rules 19. you know i just have to walk out from the stadium you know i i, I felt really bad you know I felt very really bad because you know, like, and I was being young as a young player in like a whole competition, African, African Cup. You know, everyone is watching African countries to come inside and being substituted. You know, it was it was a bad feeling, but you know that is football. It do happen. So after they gave, they encouraged me. They spoke to me. You know, so everything was good. Yeah. Good. So who gave you your greatest inspiration or encouragement in the national team? Okay, for me, I think I think uh, the one the one I used to speak mostly was the day you and Asamojan, because they were the the national team like the national they were the captain, the general and the captain. But I think the one who was giving me uh, the biggest motivation was Samosegu for because you know he really liked me because I was Samuel and he was Samuel. You know, sometimes he do he comes to my room. Sometimes you know maybe after lunch he would just sit me up you no know, you no know, explain things to me you no know, you can do it you no know, just concentrate push other you know so i think the, the likes of us are more than the day you and some 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 other circle for s by munich uh defender you no know, yeah very, very, like they motivated me a lot yeah good and congratulations because um you've not done bad for yourself in the national team at all um, people compare they compare you to messi even it, not only in Serbia, in Ghana. Yeah, yeah, I've been hearing this. You know, I've been hearing this, this, this kind of news. Like, hey, the new, the new Messi, the new Messi. Missing. Like, sometimes it's great. You know, as a young player, for me to to be like, be compare like, you no, know, like with this, we all know what Messi can do. You know, understand? So sometimes I feel great, but I don't really look. I just really don't look up to you know those people because they have their kind. That your style of play and me to maybe I have my style of play. No, some I can learn something from them, but they are not what I want to be. I want to just be myself. I just want to be some But it's, it's, it's very good they compare me with those kind of players. Yeah. Well, you know, the night of our uh, failure to qualify into the quarterfinals was was sad. I don't know what you felt. As a player coming to the national team for the first time, yo, for me, for me, I, 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 I felt, I felt bad because from, 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 from the preparation from Dubai, you know, even let's say from Ghana to Dubai to Egypt, 
the friendship, like how how the players were being motivated, how the players were being prepared, you know, from Dubai to Egypt. Me, I was I was I was I was having a feeling like no, something big is going to happen. To be in the to be first time in the national team and to win African Cup, you know, it will be just amazing. And the, in, in training, in the friendly games, even the attitude towards the coach and everything, like the players, even the the the, the old players, no, the old players, the cup, everyone, like they were being prepared for this tournament. But that's how football is. You, you can't just predict and it's happened that way. So we just give thanks to God. Yeah. Yeah, so from what you saw in camp, what do you think are some of the things that need to, I mean, change or improve for us to win the afternoon, especially with you and the entire team? Okay, 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 okay. For me, I don't, for me, I don't really have, like, I don't really have, you no know, like, I don't have anything to say, like, we are, we are supposed to do this, maybe with the players or the entire team to do this, because we all want the afternoon. They like Wakasu was man of the match twice. Jordan was man of the match, I think twice also. So like if we were supposed to like you know say something about it, they were all improving. Jordan scored, the day you scored, Wakasu was doing his best. All the players were be determined. The one who came from the bench, the one who came from the bench to start, everyone was performing. So me, from what I saw from uh, Dubai in the national team when I was there doing the AFCON, I don't really think like, I would just say this This was the reason why we we're not able to qualify. That, that's why I said it's just football. You know, we wanted to win and other, other countries wanted to win. So it just happened that way. You know, we all felt very bad but that's how football is. You know. Yeah, exactly. But well, Kwame, Kwame Bonsu and Fatah Usafi want me to tell you you are speaking very good English. They didn't know you could speak good English like that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, Kwame Bonsu. <laughs> thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Hey, Fatah, Fatah, I miss you, Charlie. When are you coming back to Ghana? You're the old man. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, after the AFCON, everybody was expecting you to... Uh, I mean, there were rumors that you were moving to Paris and Germany. It was all yeah. over Ghana and top European clubs. So it was shocking. Were this, were this, I mean, rumors, were there some iota of truth in them? Oh, okay, okay. You know me, normally when it comes to, when it comes to the transfers and everything, like, you know, I just, me, the player, you know, I just don't want to involve myself because... I after the afternoon within the afternoon when I was in, in Egypt, even during the afternoon, I got a lot of messages from agents from Bayern Munich, from Dortmund, from Paris Saint Germain agents. I gave I gave them my agent, you know, that is Michael Secretary and Chipsa, they are in charge of me, you know. I gave them their numbers, you know. So you know, I was there, I heard this I heard these rumors, you know, like Paris Saint Germain, Dortmund, you know, a whole lot of Top European club, they wanted me, but you know, as 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 a player, me, I was just, I was just waiting, you no, know, for the right team, for the right team to just happen. So what came is what I choose. So I don't really think maybe those rumors was maybe people think it was just for hyping or for just this. So you know, I I believe in God, and you know, sometimes if things comes, I just pray to God. God, you know the best. For me, so whatever comes and you think is the best, I just go. That's so, and as well, I just get even this Alfeha, they were in the first club who came from Saudi Arabia. It's Alfate, one club here called Alfate. They came, they spoke to my club, you know, my manager about the transfer. But me, I was just there, I was just waiting for them to tell me, Sammy, this club wants you just go and sign. That was what I was waiting. I was not much interested in which club is coming, which one is coming. I was just waiting. I just wanted to leave Chuka. Because I was there for two years, so I was just waiting. So they came and I just came here. Yeah. But people were shocked that you, I, you moved yeah, to know. Saudi Arabia. I you know. Yeah, I know. And why do you think people are shocked? Oh, I know. That's why. That's why we say, you know, like we Ghanaians, you know, especially we the we we Ghanaians, for instance, we believe like when you get, you know, when you get to the peak of your football career, that's where. 
you have to go to maybe Saudi Arabia, China, and this kind of stuff. You understand? That 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 is our perception. That is how we think. You know, that is how we think. Me, I was born to see this kind of thinking. You know, but I don't. And that's why I was saying I just believe in God. What is good for me is what I go for, not what is good for other people. So I just, it just came and I just came. So I know people were people were talking. Hey, you are very young. You have the talent. You should have go to. You should have go to these top clubs. And sometimes I do ask myself, okay, fine. If those top clubs they came, I would have go. You understand? Sometimes maybe the condition between the club and my club and Chuka, maybe it wasn't they, they couldn't negotiate very well. So and the, when I was in Chuka, they want my transfer fee, they wanted money. You understand? They wanted about like two point five, one uh, two million. So the club was able to even pay with the one they would take because for that time I don't have any option. You understand? So I was just waiting. So I just came here. You know, I got a lot of insult on my pages. Oh, why did you choose Saudi Arabia? The agent who the agent who took you there is stupid. A whole lot of insult for my parents. But you know, that's how it is. You're like you just take things normal because you know we are Ghanaians, you know, to air is human, you know, people talk a lot. So me, I just take everything we have. But is there a club in Europe? Do you still have vision of moving back to Europe? And is there a club that you admire that one day uh, I would love to play for this club? Okay, 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 okay. Me, me, me. For example, like, you no. Know, when I was when I when I was growing, like, you no. Know, I, I was fan of Bayern Munich because you no, know, my role model was Ayo Robin. You know his style of play, how he just come in, bend the ball, you know. So when he was in Chelsea, you know, I used to like Chelsea because of him, not because I like Chelsea. But when he came to Real Madrid, I was supporting Real Madrid because of him. But when he went to Bayern Munich, what he was doing with Bayern Munich, you know, I felt in love with Bayern Munich. So even when he left, I was still a fan of Bayern Munich. So I'm just praying one day, one day, when I'm coming back to Europe, you know, maybe to be part of, you know, Bayern Munich and maybe some, maybe Manchester United too. Okay, so man, you and Bayern Munich are class on your top wish list. Um, I know you play like Messi. People have compared you to Messi, but between Messi and Ronaldo. Okay, for me, for me, <laughs> for me, I'll just go. I'll just go for Messi. You know, not because like Ronaldo is not good, but me, I'll just go for Messi because you know okay. I like I like him because of how he plays. He's the type, you know, that the his style of play is same like me. So. I just go for Messi. And we all know well, he's been doing my goals where you know for all, some years ago. Yeah. Okay. And um, when you come to Ghana, what is your normal day like when you are in Ghana from morning to living? What do you do? Okay, me, me, when, whenever I come to Ghana, me, I don't stop playing this my 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 small pools, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, I'm 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 used to it. Sometimes or even when I take my boots, you know, my father will tell me, hey. They are not going out today, but you know, as I will just leave the house with them, with, without them being noticed. You know, so when I come to us in the, in like in the normal life, sometimes you know, in the morning I will be in the house, you know, like just just have some time with my parents and my siblings, you know. So when getting to three o'clock, four o'clock, you know, I just take my boots, go to my dinner. Uh, they have they have some small posts, you know, closer to the court. No, I'm not the yes. there, yeah. So I just go there and I, because you know that's why I played. I was I played vision and vision was in my dinner. So let's say that's where you know. So yeah. Good. Somebody is asking, um Ike is asking what is your biggest attribute, your quality as a player. What you have uh, I mean your strength as a player. Oh, okay, okay. For me I think Is I it think is it your dribbling? I think I think uh, my 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 dribbling is is part, but I think for me, since I've started playing, like what I hear from people is my is is my piece, you know. Okay, the, the speed, my, yeah, the speed, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, before I end with you, um, I I I ask questions like um your favorite food in ghana something that you miss uh, because you are not in ghana a food or a drink that you miss too much yeah i mean for me in ghana I, 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 like me i miss uh gary gary and beans you know 
Gary and Beans. You know. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean. Gary and Beans with this, you know, like you know, this fried plantain, you know. That's yeah. my. Best. You have a, you have a lot of people who eat that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's my best, you know. And I, I, I know, I know. I have a lot of. I know some people who are just watching me. They know my joint, you know. So I just want them to tell the lady, I'll be coming home very soon, you know. So you know if. She can reserve something for me, you know. I'll be happy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They they call it Gobe. So when you come down to Ghana. Yeah, they call it Gobe, yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> but you know, um I'm ending with you, but I'm commending you for uh, the kind of I mean, you do a lot of donations and charity, even though you are young. Um, you were one of the first few players to have donated towards the fight against uh, the coronavirus in Ghana, and even donating to the Ghana Football Association. Uh, what are some of them? I mean, charity activities that you do. Okay, okay. For me, like you know, apart apart from uh, like you know, apart from donating to uh, uh, the Ghana Football Association, you know, like I've been doing, I've been doing a lot of charity, but. You know, I, it's not everything I used to post and this kind of stuff, you know. You know, I have a project, which is the Orusu project, you know. You know, I've been doing a lot with this project. And even right as of now, I'm the one even sponsoring, uh, I think, Vision FC. If you will see their logo and their jersey, you will see the Orusu project, you know. I've been doing a lot, you know, in, Mad in Medina, areas in Medina, areas in Amahia, my hometown, a lot of places, you know, so, yeah. Good. So finally, when you retire, do you want to play for a club in Ghana? Um, is there a club, Kotoko Hearts, that you would want to finally play and retire? Oh, okay. For me, for me, you know, like I'm a fan of Ghana football. This Ghana league, you know, sometimes when I'm here, you know, I just go to Facebook, log in, and I watch some live. But I don't, I don't really have a club. I just want to play for any club. If I want to retire, any club who shows interest in me and want me to serve the club i'm i'm always open to, to to play for that club yeah and um you listen to ghana music a lot right yeah, 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 yeah. Well, who's your favorite i don't really have a favorite you know like i just listen to you know when i when when i hear the song and it's, it's good for me you know because I, li I like to dance so when the beat is good and i can dance with it that's all you know but I wow. I mostly I listen to like Stone Boy, Sarkozy, and Shatawali songs a lot. You no. Know? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much um, for your contribution to the national team so far, and for doing so well for yourself and career. Um, we we we'll be following you, and also having a lot of prayers for you for your kind heart. Yeah, Sammy, what's your nickname yourself? Okay, okay. For now, I'm using this OSK, you know, OSK 19, you know. Yeah. You no, know, that's, okay. that's the so that's your... Form. Yeah, the short form of my name, OSK Samuel Kwame, OSK. And the favorite number from all the clubs I've played, I've been wearing 19 JC, if you can check. You know, so... Yes, I just, yeah. I just like 19 numbers, so I just added this OSK 19, yeah. You can see okay. people are just typing that... OSK in this time, so... Great, great, great. Um, so it's OSK. Is that what your new club, the Arabians, call you there? Yeah, yeah. Some, 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 some. They call me. Some they call me OSK. You know, but most of the most they prefer to call me uh, Sammy. Sammy here. You know. Yeah. Okay. And uh, our regards to all the people in uh, Majma. Majma. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. They, okay. They, they, Thank they, you so much. Thank you so much, you know, and thank you for thank giving you. me this uh, opportunity to just express myself to my fans and each and everyone who is watching us. Thank you very much. Okay. Great. Have a good time there, buddy. Same to you, bro. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye.